All right, welcome back. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to get started on MP1. Every checkpoint comes with a new set of test cases. And in this case, uh, as in future checkpoints, there are four new tests for you to pass. Each test is worth 20 points. There's 10 points for meeting an early deadline and 10 points uh, in this case, uh, since we're working on Java, for no uh, problems with check style. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do each time, and we'll go over this a little bit in detail this time because it's our first time, is get started uh, by acquiring the test suite. So I'm going to go over to the, to the website here. Um, on the lesson page, this is also on the MP1 overview page, uh, there's a link to download the test suites. Now, this is, you know, if you're working in Java, my example's in Java here, so I'm going to get the Java test suites. I'm going to download those, and those are going to be downloaded to my local machine. I'm going to back go over back over to Android Studio. So I've completed MP0. I've got um, a, a hundred, and I've also committed my work, and I've already pushed it to GitHub. But if you haven't, this is the right time to do that before we start adding new stuff to your project. So up here, uh, you can run the commit dialog. Now, if there's nothing to commit, this is what will happen. So I haven't made any changes since I committed last time and pushed the commit that earned me a full score in MP0. Yes. Um, so I'm good. Okay. Now the next step may be a little bit tricky for some of you, which is that we need to get the file from where we downloaded it into the right spot in our project. So we essentially have to move that file. Now over here, let me show you where this is going. So this is a Java MP, and where I want to put the file is right next to MP0 test. Now the best way is to just really move that file. Let's see if I can actually do that in a way that's not confusing. I, I have my own ways of doing stuff like this uh, because I've been doing this for a long time. So let me see if I can actually like use the finder or something. Uh, hold on a sec. Let's see. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to use the finder. I'm going to go to downloads. Here's MP1 test. And let's see if I can just drag that in here. Oh, look at that. I can't. Wow. Okay. Now it's asking me, do I want to move it? Um, and I'll say, I don't need to search for references. So uh, I'll just do that. And let's see if it ended up in the right place. Uh, it did. Okay. Now this is important. After I did that, it brings up this dialog. Now here's the thing with Git. When you use Git, when you add a file to a project, it doesn't automatically track changes to that. We actually have to uh, do a separate command. So it's asking me if I want to add the file to Git. The answer is I do. That way it's included in my commits. I don't really have to, I guess, if I think about it, because we use our test suites when we do official grading. But this is a good thing to do. So what I want to do uh, here is click Add. Now, let's say that I'm jumpy and I accidentally forgot to do that and hit Cancel. You'll see over here that the file is red. This means that it's not being tracked by Git. Um, what I can do is I can go over here, I can right click on it, and then I can go to Git and I can hit Add. Uh, so, there's, so there's another way to do this later, okay? So now I've hit Add um, and now, we have some work to do, okay? This is why it was important to commit earlier because when you bring in the MP1 test suites, you're bringing in new expectations for how your code is going to work. And there are some things that we need to fix here because the MP1 test suites are expecting us to have done some, uh, to write some methods on the MP. So let's scroll down here and we're gonna find some errors and we're gonna find some errors right around here. So as part of this checkpoint, uh, this is something that we'll work on in a later lesson. We're not going to cover it today, but as part of the checkpoint, we're going to write a search method, and that search method is going to be a static method that's part of our existing restaurant class. That method doesn't exist yet, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, do something called uh, a stub, right? Um, and there's actually a couple of things that we're going to have to fix. Uh, before we can get this to work. I also see a reference to a get cuisine uh, method. So that's something else that we're gonna have to fix, okay? Um, but the first thing is let's focus on this search method. So the search method, the signature is it takes a list of restaurants and a string, and it's supposed to return a list of restaurants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, and, and where this is missing, if I right click on this, let's see what'll happen. Uh, and, and maybe go to the air. Uh, and actually it'll help, it'll say create method search, so let's do this. Now, what I'm returning here is not an object, it's actually a list of restaurants. Um, and I'm gonna do this like this. And over here, now it didn't complete the import for me. That's why this is, is well, actually I think it wants these to be final, right? Yeah, let's just do that. 
this is a check style thing. It's uh, useful when we have parameters to methods to mark them as final so that we don't modify them accidentally uh, because those modifications won't be visible to the caller. If I change the contents of a list, that's okay. Um, but I don't want to uh, modify um, the reference, the content of the reference itself because that won't be seen by the, by the caller. Okay, so uh, restaurants is good for this. I'm gonna call this uh, search. And for now, to, to get this to compile, I'm just going to return the list of restaurants. This is a method that we will have to work on later. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna move it. Uh, I'm gonna move it down. Let's see. I'm gonna move it here. Okay. And something is angry. Oh, I just need to save the file to get rid of this check style there. Okay, good. And then I have a yeah. Okay. So there's these other related problems. Now now this will go away. So we're good. We have one more problem, which actually hints at something you need to do uh, to get uh, a later part of the MP to work. And that's my restaurant uh, class now has a get cuisine uh, method, which is interesting. It didn't have this method before. The code we gave you only has one field. It only has uh, the, the name field. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, let's see here. Um, and actually I'm gonna add both of these fields and then we're gonna talk a little bit uh, later about how to get them set properly, right? Um, but it turns out that the data set that we provided, which we're going to discuss in a minute, uh, not only has names of restaurants, but also has information, it has a field that indicates what type of cuisine that restaurant serves. So I'm going to change this to say cuisine. Um, I'll change the comment to say what cuisine this restaurant serves. I'll be able to spell. Uh, and then I'll save a getter for cuisine. This is called get cuisine. We're just following our usual, you know, object-oriented patterns. You guys know how to do this stuff, and I'm going to return the cuisine value. Good. Okay. So now I go over here, and now at this point, after making those small set of changes, the MP1 test suites should compile. Okay. So you should not see any errors anymore at this point. The next thing I want to do is when you run the grade, so if I run the grade task again, I just ran it actually, but, but I'll run it again uh, just to, to see what happens. When I run the grade task again, what you're going to see is that it's going to be grading checkpoint zero. That's not what we want anymore. We're done with checkpoint zero. We want to move on to grade checkpoint one. So the next change I need to make in order to get that to happen is in a file called grade.yam. So grade.yaml, you should be visible here. Again, I'm in the project view. I'm always in the project view, not the Android view. Um, so I'm going to, once this is done, just so I proved to you that I'm running the, the MP0 test suites uh, rather than the MP1 test suites, um, you'll see that the MP0 test suites are still passing. That's good, um, but I want to start working on MP1. So I'm going to go over to grade.yaml, and all I need to do is change this from checkpoint 0 to indicate that I want to work on checkpoint 1. Now, let me run the grader again. So my project is still compiling, but now what's happening is I'm running a new set of test suites that are associated with the new checkpoint. And there's four graded test suites in here. Um, these are also summarized in the uh, overview documentation for the MP, and we'll be going through each one of them on a separate lesson. We will work on one today together. Um, Fairly straightforward little bit of code that you need to write to get started on MP1. We'll come back to that after we discuss serialization and talk a little bit about where data comes from uh, in, in your app, right? Um, and so you'll see that I'm going to expect to see some test failures, um, and I expect all my tests to fail. Now, I did get 10 points, right? So that's pretty good because there weren't any check style errors that I introduced. So actually, this is a great place to commit. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now that we have the test suites. Um, I'm not going to push, I'm just going to commit. I'm going to say uh, installed MP1 test suites and reconfigure to grade MP1. Um, and you'll see in the summary what I've changed. I had to make some changes to restaurant.java to get that search method added and to add that new field that the test suite is expecting. Um, and then I also added MP1 test, so all of this is new. And then I made a change to grade.yaml, which is that I modified the checkpoint from 0 to 1. Okay, so I'm going to commit these changes. Um, and now I'm ready to begin work on the actual tests for MP1 and the work I need to complete to earn uh, a, a good score.